Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Fede and on this channel we discover ways in which you can improve your productivity. Today we're gonna discover a template that I've created for Notion about tracking your finances. So if you're interested, please stick to the channel and let's get into the video. All right, on the video below, you will have the timestamps. I will give just a brief background on why and how I decided to move to Notion for my financial tracking. But if you're not interested in the backstory, you can just jump on the next section, which I will be at the computer, and we will look into the nitty gritty of the template and how that works and how that can help you become more financial savvy and be more mindful about your expenses. So since I started working a couple of years ago, well, almost 10 years ago, I almost sort of tracked my finances um, at the very beginning on my first um, iPhone, I think it was iPhone 4 maybe, we had the notes app and I was just tracking my source of income there, couple of my big expenses there, maybe some budgeting but it was nothing definitely um, optimized for productivity. But moving forward, I started working more and you know, I got married three years ago and so I needed a better approach to managing my finances and so I started creating multiple <laughs> Apple Notes so for different things as far as savings or debt management or income sources. But again, I always struggled because I always had to do the math either in my head or on the iPhone or on the calculator. It wasn't very, like, it, it would take a long time. I would get quite bored. And so after I started um, going back to college, I started working on Excel, my Excel spreadsheet skills. And so I transferred all of those notes into a nice Excel spreadsheet, which I've used up to a couple months ago. And it was working quite well. You know, Excel has a lot of functionalities as far as formulas and you know the little tabs you can put all the things and he was doing calculations for me but he had one big problem and that he was not mobile friendly it was very hard to use on a mobile device even on an ipad and i'm always on the go because of my job i'm pretty much always out of the house or out of the office and when i make an expense is it was just a pain to go find the cell it was not very friendly i you know i ended up not doing it or skipping a chunk of expenses and then the um, uh, the spreadsheet wouldn't add up and i would just you know whatever and so i would just not uh, keeping track of all my expenses which created other problems because we were always asking where are the money going and why are not you know on budget and kind of discussions that were not nice to make and you know finances there's always a hard topic in a couple and so I realized that I needed a different tool so I started using Notion in March 2020 specifically for my job at the beginning so I started creating database and dashboards and all that but then I realized just a couple months ago, why am I not using Notion um, for tracking my finances? I have been using Notion since March 2020, every single day, I love it. I think it's an amazing tool of possibilities. You can pretty much do anything you want in Notion. And you will see it adds very great functionalities for keeping track of your income, keeping track of your expenses keeping track of your overall, um, I guess, net loss and profit for the year. And then you can keep track of your savings. And if you wanna save for a specific things, let's say a vacation or a car or the new iPhone or a new camera, whatever you're saving for, you can create a budget category for that, which will keep track of everything that you're saving. So it's very flexible and the best thing, it is super mobile friendly. And so I've created a view of the database that it's very easy to see on the phone and you can add an expense in like 30 seconds you can add the amount the type of expense which budget it belongs to also you can take a picture of the receipt which is something that i wanted to do for the longest time but was never able to do it with the previous system or it was in an efficient way it would take too many steps and i would just give up and so i guess uh, without further ado let's get to the computer and watch the template and how it works all right, we are at the computer and I'm going to explain to you now how the system works and so you know how you can track your finances and use this template. So the very first toggle here is the video explanation. So the video that I'm recording right now, it's going to be in the financial tracker template. So if 
you know, for any reason you forget how to do certain things that I'm going to explain to you later, you can always reference uh, this video. So when you open the template, you have this three section view. You have the current month balance, which shows for the year, what's the total income, total expenses and total profit and net um, loss. Then you got the monthly income where you can see how much money you are earning for the month and then the total expenses for the month. And I'm going to explain to you how all the filter views, sort views and everything works. But at the very bottom, you have this toggle with full financial database view. And this is the back end. This is basically the engine of the system. And I'm going to explain to you this later, because first of all, I want to show you how you can input the data that you you basically this is the UI interface. And so the front end, that's where you're going to spend most of your time and then probably once a month and then once a year, you need to do a couple of things to transfer the system to the new um, fiscal year. So let's start with um, adding the monthly income. So let's say that we just got a job and we got some money and they we send the invoice, we receive the payment. And the first thing that you need to do is to click on the new button. And there are a couple of things that happen right away. The first one is it's already set for the month of October. And this is not pre-made, this is not a template. This is because of the power of Notion and the filter views. So let me just step out for a second. Let's go into the filter. In the filter view, I have set a couple of filters. So to have the monthly income, I said that the month, which is a property of the database, is October. And then uh, the template is now a check and the, you should never change any of this. This is just for the, uh, back, uh, uh, the back end and I'm going to explain to you how this works, but just don't look at this. But then you can say, see that the year contains 2021. And so if you set these filter views, what happened is that when you create a new um, income, I guess, row in, in the system, uh, page, it's called page in Notion, you have already set for the month of October, for the year 2021, and we can say, I don't know, video creation, video ad. Let's say we create a video ad. And then let's say that they pay us 500 euros or dollars. Um, so the very first thing you need to put is the amount and it's a, you know, a, a numerical amount, which is already set for euros. But if you have a different currency, you can click, you see this one, two, three here, and then you can put US dollar, Canadian dollar, one lira, which doesn't exist anymore. And then the ba, the foreign, the corona, I mean, whatever, uh, notion supports for in this case, I will just leave euros, but you can change to US dollars and it still works. Um, and then you can say, you can say, oh, um, this video ad was paid from company. Oh, you know what? It's not here. So let's say that it's a new company that you start working with. Very easy. In search of an option, you say company Acme. Oops. Company Acme. And then you push on the create button. And look at this. You create the new company Acme. Let's say that I got paid yesterday. And so October 18th, by the time that I'm recording this video, 2021, income type, it could be a salary, retainer commission, it could be whatever, you can put rent if, I don't know, someone is paying you rent. Um, and it creates a new option here, but let's say it's a retainer. You can upload your invoice. And so by clicking on um, this property here, you can choose a file and you can add whatever file is your, maybe your invoice or the receipt or whatever um, you receive for this. So you can also keep track of um, <clears throat> these files, the month, the payment type. So let's say that they pay you with a bank wire or they pay you cash or they give you a credit card. Very easy. You just say, let's say that you run a credit card online and that you paid or it can be a PayPal, but it's not here. So let's say I wanna create a PayPal option, but you know, something cool is that if you click on these three dots, you can also choose blue. You know, PayPal, it's, its color is blue, and so you just choose blue. Um, and it's not a template. You don't, don't change this, okay? And then if we jump out, look at this. So there are a couple of things that happened. We have added the income here, so it's going to be here forever. 
But look at this um, sum uh, property at the very bottom. So what happens is now it's gonna add all the previous amounts plus the new amount into a sum of all the amounts. So 2500 plus 1000 plus 500 is 4000. And another thing that happened if you look on the left, look at the total income. Total income now is 4000. So I created a connection whereas this database query this other database, the income one, it says, okay, give me the amount property here, the column, and give me the sum, calculate the sum. So here you will always have the amount. It, let's say that we are gonna delete this just for, you know, example purpose. Look, 3,500, 3,500, and everything goes back, okay? Just gonna push Command Z and, or Control Z on the Windows uh, computer, and everything goes back. Um, we're gonna see this create new recurring income item and generate currently uh, recurring monthly income in a second. Um, but before doing that, let's get into the expense section. So um, you don't see any expenses here, but you see that there are some expenses. Why is that? So if you open the full financial database view, and if we go to expenses, you see, oh, wait a minute, there are a bunch of expenses in October, but I don't see any here. Why is that? Let's get into the filter and we see something interesting. Look at this. The month is filtered by November, but for November, there hasn't been any um, uh, expense added. And so maybe I made a mistake. I moved it and I don't see anything. Don't panic. Go back to the filter from November, move it back to October and voila, you got all of the expenses that I have imp inputted um, for um, the month of October. So I've created some mock expenses. Um, I've created an emergency fund expense in the budget category of savings and expense type savings. So basically um, what I'm doing here, I call everything that goes out of my pocket an expense. But for example, the emergency fund is not an expense in itself, right? Because you know, it's still money that I own. But to make the system easy to understand, I just divided by expense income and expenses for the database. So up to now, we have three database, balance, income and expenses. And I've done that just because you will see in the full financial database view, it's so much easier to see um, the filter views from that expense database. So bear with me, you will understand why I did this. So let's say, let's add a new expense. So we'll make more sense. So let's say I want to create a new expense and as the income, it already pre-populate the year and the month. So let's say that I just bought, I don't know, uh, what, what did we buy? A camera, a new camera. So let's say camera, Canon or Sony or whatever you like. Um, I just bought a camera for, I don't know, 300 euros. All right, so the second option is the bank account. How did I pay for this item? And in this case, you can pay for different with different bank accounts or cash. Cash is not a bank account per se, but I think it's a payment type, so to speak. So I just add it here. So let's say that I paid with my bank account number two. Maybe it's a checking account that I keep for my business expenses. Um, so you can also say business account, and then you can use that. Um, you don't have to populate these, um, these sections, you can go to date. So let's say that I bought it today. So today, in order to film this video, I bought a new camera. And so I can put it here. Expense type. Okay, so here you have different options. You have purchase, build, subscription, savings, charity, investment, taxes, and online. You can put this one here. Um, for now, I will use purchase because this is a purchase. So I went there and I actually bought an item. This expense type is going to be very handy when we want to differentiate between savings, subscriptions, charity, investment, and you will see in the other database options. I also have an online because, you know, if I buy on Amazon on, or somewhere else online, I don't want to have it as a purchase. Basically, purchase is when I physically buy something. Um, online for me works to um, when I buy something online. 
The cool thing about this system is that you're not tied to uh, what I like, what I prefer. You can click on the three dots and say, instead of online, I want to call it Amazon purchase. Okay. And that works as well. Or I want to create a new one and I want to call it, I don't know, because I buy always on a specific website and then I want to be able to filter for that. And so the reason for these expense types is because then you can filter with these options here. And that's where you can see all your Amazon purchase or purchase or all or your online purchases. Okay. So for now, let's say it's a purchase fix some variable. So, um, this is mainly you will see for the recurring items, because for example, I need to pay mortgage every month. That's a fixed expense, but I need to buy grocery and that's a variable expense because every time it's a little bit different or it's a one-off. So let's say it's not a recurring item. It's not something that I usually buy. Well, that goes into one-off. That's just one time that I've bought this camera. Hopefully I don't have to buy it again. And then the receipt and this one is super powerful and you will see that when we'll get to the mobile view but for now even if you're a computer you can you know access this and um, choose a file to upload um, status you don't really need to change this but what we need to change oh i actually lied to you so badge archived um you don't have you don't have to care about this i'm probably gonna delete that by the time we watch the video but budget category we need to populate this all right, so this is my addition. Per specifically, I didn't really see this happening in any video that I've watched, so hopefully it's something new. Maybe someone else has done it, but uh, I like to think maybe I you know, added something to the Notion community. So look at this. These are all budget categories, and we'll see how to create those, but for the sake of this example, let's say that I you know, bought a technology item. Boom. I add it here and then status says over budget. And so I haven't showed you how to set a budget. We'll see it in a moment. But if by any chance I set a budget of $200 or 200 euros for the technology items and I spend 300, it's going to tell me, hey, dude, you're over budget. OK, and that's a formula in the budget um, uh, in the budget database. Thank you. OK, and then you can add anything else in this page. And that's where I love Notion more than any other place. You can create pages inside pages inside pages. And so let's say they want to say I bought the camera for for my YouTube videos and then I plan to replace it in one year. And I can, you know what, this is very cool. I can put this and say reminder, remind, I don't know, tomorrow, or I can even give a specific date. So let's say November uh, 10, 1st, 2022. And so in this way, I set up a reminder for me in one year and I can completely forget about it to replace this camera in one year. So one year from now, November 1st, or a little bit more than one year, 2022, it's going to pop up um, a message in Notion and say, hey, camera Sony, you need to replace it. How cool is that? I, I just love this. I think this is just a great um, addition to that. And I just keep, leave it so you can see it in the template. OK, so this is the template, how it works. This is basically your everyday use, OK? That's why I didn't show you the create a recurring income item because that happens monthly. So basically this is what happens daily and then that's what happened monthly and, the, and then we're going to have what, what's going to happen yearly to keep using this system. But for everyday use, that's all you need to do. And then you have another expense, you click on new, blah, 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 and you do the same drill or you get a new income. Hopefully you get <laughs> daily income, but and then you put the new income, blah, blah, blah. OK, let's get into the back end of the system. All right. So the back end of the system works like this. So let's say that I want to create a new fiscal year, which so let's I actually said we use daily, monthly and yearly, but let's go in reverse. So let's start with the yearly. So let's say that it's January 1st, 2022, and I am done with all my 2021 stuff. And by the way, this is how basically the whole system works. And so running through all of this 
will teach you how you can use this for yourself. So let's say they want to do 2022, okay? Um, I actually added here um, an icon. Uh, I'm going to do the same, um, you know, just calendar. You can then choose whatever icon fits you. I use a website. I will put the link in the description below, which is a website that I use for icons, which I think a little nicer than the one um, that uh, gives you. On the other end, if you want to, I've created a template for the new year, which pre-populates with the new icon. But that's up to you. You decide. All right, so the total income, total expenses, profit loss, everything is a zero because nothing is linked to this um, new year, uh, new fiscal year, okay? So let's say then that I, and um, let's move on now to the total income database. So here, that's where the magic happens. So you will have here no filter views other than is template. So here you will see 2021, 2022, 2023, 2020, 2050, whatever. Um, you can add any filter if you want to. You can add a filter if you just want to, I don't know, uh, filter by 2021. And as you can see, all the options will come up. And then it's going to be the same because I didn't add any 2022. But in this case, we don't really want this. What we want, though, is this. So let's create a new income here and let's call it test one. In here, that's where the really the magic happens. You push on the 2022 and now this new income and I'm going to put, I don't know, 200. Look at this. It's going to be linked directly to the new fiscal year. Whatever you put here is going to be here and then you can fill out all of the other uh, property and as you wish it's exactly the same but the cool thing is everything it's already pre-linked for you you don't really have to do anything other than create a new year as I showed you and then on this property here you linked it and then you can take it out uh, maybe you want to change it maybe you, you were wrong it was a 2021 no big deal okay so notion really allows you to have this power of linked databases Okay, let's talk about the uh, total expense database because this total expense database and you can see database expenses is going to be linked with the total savings, total investments, total taxes, total charity, if you feel inclined to do charity. And the and then we're going to have a different budget for the uh, for the budget database. So let's get to the expenses. So the the um, uh, database works exactly the same. It's no different from what you saw up here in the monthly expenses, other than this is not filtered by month nor by uh, year. So if you go to the filter, it's only filtered by East template. And by the way, this East template, it's going to be because of the recurring items. And you will see that when we get to that section. Um, so the total expense database, you have all of this. What you can do here same as new income. So let's say I have a mortgage for January 2022. I go here, I go year 2022 and voila, I got this new mortgage and then I can choose January. But now this January is going to be linked to 2022. So if I go up here in my monthly expenses, I don't see any of this. I can make all these changes, but I don't see any of this. How can I see this? So let's say that now is January 2022 and I don't want to see October anymore. I go to filter and say year contains 2021, not anymore. Year contains 2022. Month is not October. It's actually January. And voila, look at this. You got January 2022. You got all of the uh, categories that you're interested in. Okay. So that's how you uh, move on with the expense uh, database, it's total expenses. Now, how do the total savings, total investment work? So let's get, for example, total savings. Let's get at the filter. So the total saving filter has one more filter, which is the expense type here is savings. Do you remember that I showed you how we have different expense types uh, earlier in the video? That's where basically you can tell 
So let's say for 2022, I create another expense, which is the emergency fund, or, or maybe I, you know, whatever you are saving for, um, 2022. And then you can put for January, and by the way, it also comes up here because it's linked. And then the expense, so let's say it's 200 euros that I'm putting aside for savings. Voila, look at this. Now I see in the saving account, in the saving, sorry, database, all by savings. And this is just because imagine when you will use it for a year, your expenses will be hundreds. Oh, I don't know, maybe thousands, but you will have so many, they will be so hard to keep track of all of them without having filter view. So here you basically have a total expense database, but here I wanna say how much did I save for the year or for um, in total, you know? And that's where you have the sum. One thing that you can do here, if you're just interested in knowing if, how much you saved in 2021, for example, filter, add a filter, um, and then you go to year contains 2021 and there you go you will see how much money you saved for 2021 but this is not um, something that I want to keep you can add it as you wish I mean you under you will understand how the system works by the end of this video you'll be able to do it by yourself and you always have this sum here Total investments, total taxes, charity works exactly the same way. So let's say that it's not an emergency fund, which is, I don't know, uh, tax, income taxes. And then instead of savings, you put taxes here. It moves out from the total savings and it goes into total taxes. Very powerful, very streamlined. Okay, this is the end for the expenses. I hope that that will make sense for you. So now let's move on to the total budget database. Okay, let's get to the budget um, database here. Um, so you will see the line of the, the, the row of the budget uh, database works like this. So you have the year 2021, you have the month October, you have the name of the budget, the budgeted amount. So here you can decide what's the budget for the month for this specific category, it can be 1000, um, you see, if I move to 100, it moves down because it is sorted to be descending for budgeted amount. So the lowest budget will go down and the highest will go up. Um, but for now, let's keep it at 1000. So, um, and then you have this roll up function, which is called category sum. So here you have a relation to another database, which is to relate it to expenses amount sum for the but for the related expense. So now here we don't see any related expense. Why? Because here in the income taxes for 2021 budget category, we need to choose taxes. Oh, this is for September. Uh, the one in October, you need to choose. And it will show up here, which it doesn't for some reason. So if this happens, that doesn't show up here, which Oh, there you go. It, it showed. It, it would just take in a second. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit to reload. But in case it doesn't show up here, I'm just going to show you what you need to do. So you take that off and then you look for income taxes, which is the one that I'm looking at. It's 800, right? 800 here and you can add it. But if, if not, it will just work automatically here. Um, and then you have these budget categories with these little nice icons. You can decide all the budget amount. Um, oh yes, let's look at the budget formula. So the budget formula, you don't really have to change, but it's an if else, very simple. What I'm saying is if the budgeted amount is greater or equal to category sum. So if this one is greater than this one, okay, we're on budget, else we are over budget. So very simple, but very powerful because it can give you feedback on how you're doing with your spendings. Okay, now let's look at something very, very powerful. Generate recurrent budget category. So I'll show you how it works and then we'll see the behind the scenes. Okay, let's say that October is gone. So I go to filter, I go to month. It's not October anymore. And remember to do this step every time there is a month change on all the databases that have a filter views. Let's go to November. Oh, wow. I don't have anything here. 
but I can click on this generate recurrent budget categories and look at this magic. I created a bunch of categories um, which are here, but I don't want them here. I want them in my budget. So I'm going to just click on one, then press shift and down arrow key. That's how I do it. You can do it a different way. And then I'm just going to drag them inside the budget. I do not want to remove the sorting and look what happens. I basically, because of the filter view with November, Notion automatically assigns November as a month to this pre-populates November as a month to all the budget categories. And now I have all new categories. So if I go up here and I make um, a new, oh, not January. So let's go back to filter. Let's go to November and let's go to 2021. So if I go here and I create a new expense and I call it, I don't know, pizza hut, which we don't have, but let's say that I open one in Italy and I say, yes, spend 15 euros and the budget category now you see you have October, November. The best way to navigate this is to say it to remember your budget categories and say food. All right. So I want food for November. You click on it. Voila. It shows up here. If you go down here, what is that? Look at this. That's what I was talking before. Do you remember food budget category? I have the expense pizza hut and it's already adding 15 euros. And because the budget amount for the month for food is 500 euros, I'm good. I'm still on budget. Okay. So that's how they're all connected. And that's how it will give you the feedback for all these budgets. Um, you can have a couple of options. If you don't like to have a messy list of budgets, you can either delete them at the end of the month. So let's say the October, I don't need them anymore. I can select all of them. Uh, let's do it for November for now. Uh, shift arrow down key. Whoa. Okay. Let's, let's say that I don't need all of this. I can just delete them. Okay. In this way, you, um, you can only have the one for the new month, but let's say that I don't want to do this. So let's keep this for now. Um, I don't mind. I can just search and it's very, very simple. Now, um, let's get into the generate recurrent budget categories. So you see at the very far right, you have configure template. So if you push on it, you have all of these um, categories. So let's say that I want to add a new category. Very simple. You see this create a new budget category toggle. You open it and then you click on new either down here or up here. And let's say that I want to create clothing. I don't see a budget for clothing. I don't put anything in the month. I don't put um, anything in the year. If I want to have a pre budget, so let's say that I want to usually spend, I don't know, 50 euros for uh, budget, budget 50 euros for uh, purchasing new clothes. What I can do here is to pre populate this option. And so every budget that I will have will have a default option of 50 that I, then I can change and adjust. And that's all I need to do. Then from clothing, oh, uh, the last thing that you can do, actually, you can add an icon, uh, maybe with clothing. Um, again, you can put whatever you like as an icon. I like icons. I think it makes it fun, but it's not required. Now, what you need to do, and this is very, very important. You need to click on this, drag it and move it somewhere that is not inside, but it's in between. So let's say here. Now I've created this clothing category. Another thing that I can do, let's say that um, for food, I don't want to have a default 500. I think it's uh, too much or too low. So I can click on the budget category and I can move it inside here. And let's say, well, I actually spend 300 euros per month for food. If you are a single person, I'm sure you can seek with a family of four. That's not going to happen. Uh, at least not here in Italy. And so you have the category of food now, which uh, with a 300 pre-populated option, you change it and then you click and drag and put it back here. You need to do this way. If you want to change the name or the budget amount or any other thing, you can just click on it. Th that's not going to happen. Okay. That's not going to work. Um, oops. I closed everything. Um, 
So now when I click on generate recurring budget categories, I'm going to have my new clothing budget category, my new um, default food option. Everything is going to be there. Very simple, very easy. So you can change all of these categories. You can do whatever you want. Let's see another feature that I've added, which helps me. So let's say, for example, in the food category, and actually I'm going to click on it. And so inside what I like to do to remind myself, so each month when the income comes, my salary, my wife and I, we sit down at the computer and we go through all the budget categories. I create the new budget and then move them and uh, move them around. But what you can do here, you can pre-populate this uh, template and say, okay, I want to actually spend 250 for grocery and 50 for restaurant, which is going to pizzerias or somewhere. In this way, that helps me and reminds us, okay, what are these budget? Like this budget is 300. What's the sub budget? Like what did we budget for each very specific category? Which honestly, I did not want to put as a, as a whole new category here because that would have been too much in my opinion. But I just wanted to go into food and say, oh, all right, okay, so this was what we budgeted for November or let's say for health. Oh, it was the dentist. Okay, because uh, tr trust me, you will forget. <laughs> and so this is a very cool way to keep things simple. Um, the same method that I just showed you for the budget works for income and for, um, wh what are they? Here, the recurring item expense. So I'm not gonna show you all the, like, you know, the template and how to change it. Everything works exactly the same. It just, you repeat all of this. Okay, so you move things here if you wanna change, or you create a new one here. But what I'm gonna show you is that it's very simple. You create new recurring items, you click on them and you move them here. You don't remove the story. Oh, I've got a blank one. And this is so powerful. Like think about, you don't have to input manually all your recurring expenses, which can be mortgage, Wi-Fi, Netflix. Like up here in my personal one, I have like 20 that I know are recurring and I just put them here. The only thing that I do then is to assign them to the right budget category because, you know, each month it will have a different budget category and then the date. So let's say the mortgage, I know it's always the first day of the month that it gets pulled out from the bank account. So I put November 1st, but let's say the Netflix, it's going to come on November 15th because that's when I made my subscription. I can already made it or when I see that expense come through, I can update it. And then it already goes into the subscription, it's fixed and blah, blah, blah. So everything works as planned. Um, you can do the same thing for the income. You can generate recurring income. In this case, just one salary. So let's say they were switching to November. So filter, you go into November, you pull the salary and you put it up here. You don't remove and voila, everything works again. So that's pretty much everything for the desktop view. So let's now jump on the phone view, which I have here on my iPhone and you will see on the screen. So this is the template. You, as you can see, you have the current month balance, monthly income, and this is what I am super happy about. So if you go uh, in the expense, you see there is gallery mobile view. If you click on it, you have different views. For your phone, you should always leave the gallery view, okay? Gallery mobile view. And as you can see, you have some kind of like cards, which um, they say the, ex the name of the expense, the amount, the budget category and the date. And so if you wanna create a new uh, expense right on the phone, you click on new. And then you say, let's say I bought like a tripod for the camera. I spent 20 euros. And so, and then you do the same drill. And maybe I pay with cash. A budget category is still, you know, you look for tech items. Okay. And then the date you put, I bought it today. And so expense type, it's a purchase. Um, fix and variable, it's a one-off, the receipt, and this is really cool, look at this. So you can actually choose a file, take a photo, and you can take a photo right there, I took my mouse, and then you, you can use the photo 
and it will go into the receipt. And then here you can put any other information, test, test, one, okay? And so then you just swipe and there you go. Look at this, you have tripod, technology item and everything works as expected. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little long, uh, but you know, I get tend to talk a lot, but I really wanted to give you a thorough explanation of the financial tracker. I really appreciate you guys, appreciate your time. I hope you find this video helpful. Please leave uh, comments below if you, something wasn't clear. Please subscribe if you would like to see more content related to Notion or productivity in general. Push the like button if the video was of your pleasure. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.